Welcome to the Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. We have a great watch list for you today. Today's date is October the 20th, 2019 in Miss Vegas. Okay, well, you know what? We're going to have a lot of things to talk about, and I'll go through that list momentarily, but I really want to talk about what happened on Friday. Uh, Friday, we saw, obviously, a market dip. Um, you know, we saw a lot of stocks pulling back. And uh, in particular, I want to talk about just a couple really good option trades that we had. And I got to say, these were more than 500%. These were thousands of percent. Uh, and we're going to talk briefly. So, you know, Boeing had some news uh, with pilots commentary. And we had some news on another FAA demanding some ex additional explanations on what's happening with the 737 maxes. I mean, there's all kinds of media reports going on out there. Um, as you can see, as soon as I heard about the news, I did alert an option idea, and it was an option put, and uh, they were at 24 cents. Um, they jumped really fast, so at the time that I typed it, it, it was 24, and then it jumped very quickly to 40 cents plus. Um, you could see one of the members got in at 40 cents, and uh, only bought three puts and he made $3,700. <laughs> Excuse me, at least another one of our members took it at 23, sold it at 260. I mean, listen, he was up, you know, hundreds and hundreds of percent gains um, and sold it and took his profit. But I got to tell you, I mean, you could see here with the screenshot, the one in the middle with the green, um, I circled here 703. I mean, that's, it went higher than that. It went to over a thousand dollars a contract on a 25 cent entry and some people got in even lower so congrats to so many people that made phenomenal phenomenal money on boeing um the other thing that was an amazing trade um which was to me um so, like so so amazing uh was facebook uh, definitely, I call that one a super lotto because, I mean, I saw Facebook keep, kept making lows of the day. And I thought, you know what, this looks like it's really going to go even lower. I think I'm going to call out this trade. I'm going to call it a super lotto because it was super cheap, four cents, which is four dollars for one contract. And look what happened. The picture right below, <clears throat> you'll see that it went to as high as a dollar forty one per contract from four dollars so if you didn't put four dollars and bought one contract you could have made almost 35 3500 percent gains so you want to talk about gains and percentage gains there is thousands of percentage gains here so great great calls great great gains um i love the fact that small accounts could seriously bank i mean um, I know some people that shared, and I couldn't put them all here, it's just too many, just too many, um, that people did buy um, a lot of option contracts on Facebook in particular because it was so cheap. One person said they bought, I think, 10 or 20, and they sold it when it got to, I believe it was 50 or 60 cents. They were so happy. Um, but I got to tell you, what an amazing day Friday. Not amazing for the market because the market pulled back, but an amazing opportunity to make money so again if you are new to options or have a small account uh, definitely come visit us and uh, love to help you okay so let's go right away to the watch list so we have boeing tesla crocs mlss plug and bngo so i want to talk to you guys about boeing briefly as you guys know they've had a lot of bad press but i think what's important is this you know when when a company is ordering an aircraft to be manufactured obviously boeing has received the cash for the aircraft i was reading an article in uh, Seeking Alpha, and uh, it w was an article, I'm going to give credit to the gentleman that wrote it, which was Deirin Beachai, and, um, you know, he made a, a very good case here, and he basically said, uh, you know, that Boeing has received cash for the aircrafts that it has sold, and, it, it, you know, they definitely have to record it as a liability, they have to continue to produce the aircraft because it is accounted for in the inventories, which is classified as an asset. However, in the absence of the production, what could happen is that Boeing could ultimately be forced to refund the cash, and they simply don't have that cash at the moment, and they never had that amount of cash lying around in an empty drawer. So partially with the return to service in mind, continued production is understandable, 
decision, but the company also doesn't have a lot of other options that would not put Boeing in a potential worse position. So a really good article. If you if you like to go to Seeking Alpha, you can check out the article and read the details. I'll be happy to include it in our video in the comments below. But I got to tell you, Boeing right now, the news is just not great. A lot of damage control. We also know that the CEO was removed from chairman of the board. It was a business decision because they want him to focus back to the operations. And there's a lot of damage control that needs to be done. Um, you know, Boeing has earnings this week. And you know what? These analysts and shareholders, they want answers. They want to know what's going on. They want updates. Um, so they got to do a lot of damage control. I mean, what's Boeing going to do tomorrow? Who knows? I mean, it could continue going down. It could have a pop and a drop. I mean, I can't really tell you 100%, but I just don't really think that it's going to suddenly have a huge volume surge and start going up, you know, $10, $20, unless they have some serious announcements to come out. But I think there's a lot of um, anticipation with regards to earnings coming up, and I really don't know. I, I don't think it's going to look pretty for Boeing, in my opinion, from everything I've been reading. Again, I'd be, uh, you know, surprised. You know, it is sad to see, unfortunately, that a company of this magnitude and that's had a fantastic reputation um, is going through these kinds of challenges right now. Um, so definitely keep this on watch. And Jim, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Boeing in general because you're looking at the chart and, you know, we have to go based on price action and chart right now. So what are you kind of seeing on Boeing? Yeah, we were one of the first ones to hear about the news. I, I do believe on a Boeing when it came out from Trade Exchange. <coughs> Excuse me. I got a low, low support on this thing right around 320. We jumped on it right when we hit the news. As you can see, it just was a straight drawdown. I mean, this was a huge sell-off. Probably one of the biggest ones I've ever seen on Boeing. And I think this will continue into next week. I do believe it will pull back to that lower support level that we had right here and create a double bottom, and that's right at 320.39. So I'm going to pull up the, well, you can't hardly read that one. This is going to be the daily chart. I don't see it going up much. We do got to break a resistance of 345.57. I did call a 350 in the room once we found out about the news. By that, that time, it was up here at 365. I said, this thing's going to 350. So load up, and it did drop down to 350 about an hour and a half later, maybe two hours later. It retraced a couple of times, and then when we created that, that bottom, it bounced up and created a double top, and then pulled back to a lower support into after our market at 343.65. So I'm going to change this here to a 20-day chart, see if I can get these other support levels. Nope, we have to go a little lower. We'll go to three months. So these are kind of the targets that we need to hit for the pullback, and the resistances are going to be the 350 to the 354 area. And I know there's a lot of lines on here, but Min Vegas has been playing this stock almost every day. And you can tell in the TTM squeeze that it has showed some red lines here for the last two and a half weeks, three weeks. And that big surge in volume, as you can see what happened Friday, and I do believe that this is going to pull back some more. So I've got a couple puts on this at $300 level for the 25th. I do believe that it can come down to this 320.39 and create a double bottom, but I've got three other supports. One's going to be here at 342.26, 337.05, 329.39, and then if it breaks below that, we are going to see that 320.39. And that's Boeing. I hope everybody got in that trade Friday and watch it close this week. You're sure going to be some ways to play it if you're going to play the calls or the puts. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Tesla. Oh, my gosh. I love Tesla. I mean, I love the car, and I've been in it. I've even been in the SUV. Love Tesla. But uh, you know what? They got earnings this week, and uh, there's uh, chatter on here from social media. You know, this is news <clears throat> that maybe they will have unpleasant earnings. Um you know, another one that's reporting, excuse me, this week. And uh, apparently we might see year over year revenue declining in its first quarter and its third consecutive unprofitable quarter, despite selling a record number of cars. Um, I think what investors are looking for, uh, which was commented in the report, is that investors are really looking for a positive free cash flow. And they're really looking for a forecast for profit or any signs 
that Tesla is really on a path to profitability, or at least that the demand for the cars are still very strong. So um, there was an analyst from JP Morgan um, that uh, downgraded the stock to a hold and said it was the first time since covering the stock that they found themselves wondering whether the demand growth for Tesla cars could actually be leveling off. Sorry, leveling off. So um, they kind of said it was kind of a hold for now. Um, you know, Elon Musk, as we know, he will obviously be countering that notion. He's going to attempt to get the production started in China and prepping for the launch of the Model Y. And one of the analysts from RBC believes that Tesla might move up the mid SUV, which apparently might be starting production late next year, which will help jolt the growth. Again, these are all, you know, potential things that are being assumed at this time. Nothing has been confirmed. We have to wait for the earnings report to see what's going to happen. Um, but I definitely love Tesla. I love trading it. Um, but I don't know, like I have to, you know, I'm kind of wondering like what's going to happen with the earnings report. So I'm kind of just going to sit on the sidelines and wait and see. But Jim, I'd love to hear your thoughts also on this chart because I just love uh, the company. Yeah, Wet Bush maintains a neutral rating on Tesla for a 220 uh, target price on it. And with that news that Miss Vegas just mentioned of the unpleasant earnings turnout, I'm bullish on Tesla. I've always been bullish on Tesla, but you also got to play the pullbacks. I've been called this stock went out during the IPO and it ran all the way up to about 375. So, and I played that $300 range for a good year, but. With the unpleasant tweets that came out from Musk and uh, brought this stock down to a low of 176.99. Now that he's been sanctioned, not to be you know open his mouth that much, it went bounced back up, and we created a double top. We created a double top right here at the 265 level, 265.47, somewhere in there. I cleaned this chart up, and we're starting fresh. So this is the yearly chart, the TTM squeeze. And then we have over here the 20 day one hour that I look at when I'm drawing new trend lines and stuff. And I'm going to put one right there at 256. So I can, I'm going to maintain the target two of 220 on this stock long. But I, I, I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow. It'll take a little bit of time. So we got a little pivot point area, got a little support area right here at the 246.47. Or let me draw this in a red line and we'll define it here a little bit tighter. And I'm pretty pretty good on this of hitting the resistances and the pullbacks on this. We did break out of that channel that we had to break at the $248 level. And I had a target to $250 after that. You can see what happened last week with it. It almost hit that $265.47 that I got my eye on. But I think with this, and you see the acceleration every day, that newer highs and higher lows. And then Friday, everything sold off. So there's a lot of good opportunity on stocks that you like. If you play that pullback on some of them, and I did, I got into four options myself for next week on a lot of these pullbacks. But I do believe with this unpleasant news that it can pull back to this 248.25 area come Monday, maybe pull back a little bit more, and it's going to be, a, and this stock runs in twin trends. As you can see right here, the trend sold off, and just follow that trend and usually get a good rebound. But you can see the trend right here. It just kind of sell off. I mean, that's a pretty good little sell off from 245 to 228 in one day at the end of the day. And then she went ahead and bounced up. So you've got to follow this in the trend. If the trend's going down, follow it. Uh, Vegas and I have been waiting for the first 15 minutes to even an hour before we even decide to get into a trade. Because we're, we're bull traders and we're becoming um, put traders too or bear traders, you know, we identify the pullbacks on them. So we've got different support levels on this, and I'm going to keep adding them on here. i got a 242.38 that I like. Put that in right there. Whoop, i got to change that around. It's not supposed to do that. So we'll go to properties. You get a little lesson on how to use this. Turn this on. I want to show the price. I want to show it on the left. I'm going to hit OK. And see how that line went all the way. This is through the Toss Thinker Swim platform. You can always reverse this and add these trend lines to that. But you got to first put the line on and then hit that with the right click. So our first support is going to be right down here. I'm going to suggest maybe at 250. 
I love that 250 number. And then we've got the other, th there it goes again. I didn't hit what I didn't do now. Sorry about the delay here, but I got to hit the default button. So you get another lesson. <laughs> on the left, on the right, hit the default, and then there you go. Now every time I hit this, it'll change. So I got three low support levels, and I'm going to put another one right here. And I'm going to change that into blue. Right there. Hit that default. There you go. So every line I do now will be in the blue. So we have different support levels on this. Remember, it maintains a $220 pullback price target. If you see that, that's probably going to be a good strong buy for an upward trend. First support, 250.58, 248.25, and that 245.81. And if you want to know the rest of them, just kind of pause this out, write these numbers down, and always come to our room. We do offer a week trial. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Crocs. C R O X. Okay, well, you, you know, those are the shoes I just love to hate, and I don't like them, so won't wear them. Not for me, not my style, but a lot of people love them, swear by them, and that's great. Uh, people rave about them, actually. Uh, but they don't just make the clogs, they make sandals as well. Um, so they do have earnings coming out in a, uh, in a little over a week. Um, not this week, but the week after. But, uh, you know, they have a lot of really good um, projections. I mean, the last time um, they had um, projected that in North America, they hope to have their third quarter quarter revenues to be 295 to 305 million um it did report 261.1 million in the year ago um last year and uh they did say that um they were improving their e-com business as well so uh, i guess we'll hear what kind of excitement they're going to report next week um the thing is if you the reason i wanted to talk about this actual stock um, is not because I love the shoes, but because of the fact that I just love the channel of, this, of the actual chart. It's got a nice pocket pivot. It's got new 52-week closing highs. It's definitely overbought. It's got a lot of strength in the actual um, chart. So this might also be one that you want to, you know, look to swing trade or day trade between now and the earnings. Again, not a lot of people will hold into earnings, and that's fine. Um, but you could at least consider looking at it for day trade or swing trade. So, Jim, let's hear about this Crocs chart, please. Yeah, these are great shoes for, like, if you like to go boating and stuff. I like them because they have a lot of air that flows to your feet. You know, I don't like my fleet feet to be smothered to death. Um, so, we're going to look at the chart right now. I'm going to pull up the yearly and the 20-day. And the, uh, you see we had a couple uh, breakouts on this stock where it ran to 31, pulled back. Ran all the way up to 30, pulled back deep real hard, really hard sell-off. Ever since then, you've almost had 100% on it in about five months. But then we've this last pullback we had, it's just the, the 9 and the 34 broke out over the 200 EMA. And it's been following that 9 all the way up on the yearly chart. So now we look at the 20-day, and you can see on the, even the 20-day, it's been a pretty good little run. I'm going to throw a little trend line right down here at 2686. We won't see that. But I do believe this can pull back to my first support level, and that's going to be right around the 3193 for an entry. We did have a double top on it, and it did kind of break out of that double top pre-market to $33. So there is some interest on this trade, but once it did that, it pulled right back to that 3193 area. So that's going to be a strong, strong support level. Now I'm going to bring this up to a, let me pull this up to that's not the one I want to see right there. This is my TTM chart. We're going to pull this up to 20 day, one hour. I'm going to draw a few supports on this thing. I think I got one right here that I like at the 3229. And then we'll just kind of leave this alone. So we need this 3193 to hold. If that doesn't hold, we'll definitely pull out, pull back to this 3133. And then she'll retrace back up. But we could break the double top here and that double top resistance. We did kind of break my resistance level that I needed to at 32.74. And we held above that for a couple hours at 32.86. So that's going to be my strong resistance, 32.86. If we can break that, we're going to go to all-time highs. I think that's all-time highs. Let me double check. 
We'll go back here to the one year. Yep, that'll be an all-time high on the yearly chart. So I wish you best luck. Always pause these charts if you like. Just remember they came from I Love Stocks. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be MLSS. Okay, so Jim, I sent you a link there for the website if you want to show that. Um, but I just wanted to mention with Milestone Scientific, I, another nice chart that I like. I've actually never traded this one, but I do like the fact they're in the, into the healthcare, they're into medical instruments and supplies. And the medical instrument industry for 2019 has really been uh, really strong. And, you know, this company here called Milestone Scientific, um, you know, they're all about... Um, the, you know, they have 20 patents regarding their injection and drug delivery system. So they work a lot with obviously medical practitioners and also with dentists. So if you go to the dentist and you're obviously getting your mouth uh, frozen with anesthesia, um, they are working with what they call to be a leader in the injection technology. And the reason is because it's going to help improve patient satisfaction. I mean, if you think about it, nobody likes to get a needle um, no, you know, a lot of people are actually terrified and, um, you know, some people, I know people that actually don't even want to go to the dentist because they don't, they're afraid of, you know, the needle and some people have a real big phobia about it. I, I mean, I'm not, nobody I know loves going to the dentist and getting uh, a needle. Um, but anyhow, just not, aside from dentistry, but also doctors. Um, so they're looking, you know, they have a lot of uh, products in the line and I bring this chart to your attention in particular um because i really like the fact that this also has made a nice new 52 week high um it definitely is overbought it, to me it looks like it's ready for an expansion break uh which means it definitely wants to go higher so definitely again um no position i'm going to be look keeping this on watch uh the price currently you know 135 uh, reasonably priced for one of those low cheaper penny plays um so keep it on your watch list this week you know you may like to day trade it if there's a good opportunity you may want to swing trade this i mean i kind of like it also for a swing trade um but it might actually be good for a day trade just really depends on the volume that comes in here but uh really good setup here coming up and jim i want to hear about your thoughts on that chart for mlss please yes i am a really enthusiast about my extended trend lines and i've been using them for over 15 years and I've noticed a lot of times that they line up to previous supports and resistances. These orange ones I have on here right now are 2018. As you can see, the stock touches almost every one of them as a support level and a resistance level. The moment I add a blue one right here, this reminds me of 2019. That's the year we're in right now. So, and you can tell right over here on the 20 day where that popped in and we hit that high before and we hit it again right here. So yeah, these 2018 trend lines, I still use them until they really start clogging up my charts and then I erase them. But it's just a reliable source. History always repeats itself. And I'll pull up the three year chart here in a second and show you how I got these 2018 trend lines. We do have a new resistance level right here at 134.59 that we need to break. And we did after hours, we went all the way up to 141. And I'm going to draw that little trend line right here on the 20 day. So that's the resistance that we need to break for it to go on up. We did have a 141 high, but I have a 139.72. So let's pull up the TTM squeeze chart and have a look at the three year. I just want to see where I always like to remind myself three year high on this was $2.15. As everybody noticed last week, pennies are starting to come back into play i avoided them for a few months they just weren't doing nothing for me and i learned how to play the options so every time you have to be kind of what you got to be is in every situation the market dictates how i trade and and then i just that's just the way i perform but we do have the 2018 trend lines here and you can see that we've played the heck out of l m l s s and we've had a great run from the bottom down here we did have a 26 sent low i don't know if this has had any splits or anything i haven't really looked at the history but here we are at 135. so let's pull up the 20 day let's see if i can just find any more support levels or a pullback i see one right here right there at 125.17 that's going to be a support level and i see one right here at 128.51 the resistance we need to break is going to be that last one i said 139.72 which we might have done already 
but it did pull back after hours to right here at 137.81 so I'm going to put that on here also and we'll see this how it identifies itself we did have a, a, a and one thing I've always tell the room is look for patterns look for patterns what we have right here is a ascending triangle pattern we had to break a resistance of that 121.84 to get up to new highs and I always say it doesn't break that resistance until I have a one minute candle right behind it that has the base above that resistance line and that's the ready set go for me to get to move on into the trade if I'm not in it already but when I recognize these patterns I usually get in at one of these lower highs and I anticipate that triple top breakout or even that resistance breakout at 121.84 so let's pull up the daily one minute right now the low support is going to be right here and I'm going to draw a red line on that to indicate that that's a very important trend line that I need to pull back to if it does decide to pull back to and it needs to hold that's going to be that red line support level at 121.84 and it can go lower it can go to this previous low right down here at 109 but right now it looks to me very bullish that we could have that breakout so let's pull up the daily one minute this is what I day trade with and this tells me a couple other places where I could draw a support line you see we had this double top right here so I'm going to draw that in there and I'm going to turn that red. I want that to be a very important support level for me when I come in Monday and want Monday and want to get in this trade. And then we have another one right here. And that's where it pulled back right into close at 129.86. So that's a nice little bounce after hours. And then we have that double top here at 141. Look right there. 141. Bam. You know, it didn't want to break that. So we're going to put that in there also. That's going to be my my outstanding one that I need to break it's going to be that 141 area so here we're going to pull down the supports we've got a low low support if it decides to sell off here at 121.84 that's where that ascending triangle started and that's where that resistance left and it broke that resistance the next solid support is going to be here at 132.91 now anything in between here we also could hit and if you start seeing some indication maybe a doji or something that wants to bounce up we could start regaining and create a new channel in this area between the 129 130 and the 141 area but we need that 141 to break and that's MLSS and the next one we're going to talk about is something that gets plugged in plugged out it's called plug Miss Vegas Okay, so now we're going to talk about plug, you know, so if you actually look at this chart, uh, to me, it's still bullish. Um, you know, I still like the weekly chart. I don't know. I mean, I like to look at the daily, but I like the fact that plug has closed again with a new 52 week high still has a nice pocket pivot. Um, you know, plug, you know, is one to watch. I mean, the earnings is uh, not that far away. And I'm interested to see what they're going to have to say in the next couple of weeks when the earnings come out. Um, you know, they have a lot going on. Uh, the company is very involved in obviously so many different products. And uh, the CEO has been working on a lot of things. I mean, they're into the Gen Drive, they're into the Gen Sure, they're into ProGen, which is the fuel cell engines, they're into cell power for stationary power applications. Um, they're also into um, acid batteries that help lift trucks. I mean, they're into so many things. Um, so I'm interested to see what the earnings is going to be all about uh, because I kind of think, you know, the channel that we're in here, I mean, we've, we have seen these levels in the past, but it's nice to finally see this go over this $3. Um, so, Jim, what are your thoughts on this chart? Um, you know, I kind of seen it at one time in the 280 range for, you know, long, long periods of time, finally broke this three and, uh, want to hear what you think about this in the next, um, what you see ahead, if this can continue on a bullish trend. Yep. Well, she's bounced up. And, from... what, and what the pullback low support, because, you know, if I'm, I'm not in it at the moment, I wasn't a swing trade, but it wasn't really doing much. Yep. I'm going to revisit this again, uh, tomorrow, but maybe give us your low support and your next potential resistances yeah we broke out of an upper upward wedge as you can see not really a pennant flag but it did have higher highs 
and higher lows and it squeezed out and then we had that breakout after hours to 311. I do believe this company's probably stock price uh, needs to be a little bit higher than what it is right now. I think this stock has still gets good volume but it just doesn't get that attention that it needs. Uh, we did have a 20 day low at 232 and we've had a 20 day high at 310. So almost a dollar, I mean 90 cent bounce right there or a little under 90, 80 cent bounce right there. Low support on this is going to be right around the 284. I'm going to put that in a red line right here at 284 on that 20 day. That's going to be your low, 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 low support. I mean, if it gets down below there, that's going to be a strong buy. And it can pull back to where this ascending triangle or that wedge up. I counted at 279. And so your, your first support is going to be that 304 area. If it pulls back to 304, that's your first one. Your second one's going to be at 297. Third one's at 288. And the strong buy is going to be right here at 284. Now I'm going to pull up to 20 day. First, I want to pull up just the yearly and have one more good look at it. Yeah, we see we've had a double top right here at that low support at 285. And then it did break above that. So, yeah, that's going to be a strong buy if we do get to that area. And the resistance we got to break is going to be 304. Let's bring this to the daily one minute, see if I missed anything. Yeah, of course, I always do. The finer you get on these charts, the more you can see on them. So I keep drawing these trend lines in here. But I'm still going to stick with my 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 uh, my 284 as a strong strong buy and I'm going to call that low support like I said earlier right around here at 294. If it dips down there that's going to be your third support. And then you've got your first channel right in here between 297 and 301. It could retrace back up there and bounce on up and break that 310 that we have after high after after hours high I mean this is a beautiful chart it's had a great run and I love this company and we do need to start you know times are changing and electricity and powering things up through alternative sources this is a green power start stock and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be the special that everybody was talking about last week and that's called BNGO yeah, so Mr. Bingo, I mean, everyone was calling it Bingo, but this is Bio Nano uh, Genomics. And um, this company here, this had quite the run. And a lot of people uh, I know did very well on this. And you know what? I got to say, we really traded this really nicely on a lot of reversal plays. I mean, I love to play reversal. So sometimes I will catch the breakout and I'll trade the breakout. And uh, I mean, I love penny stocks, um, especially this past week have been fantastic. Um, but I gotta say like when this, when a uh, stock has a nice run and then it pulls back, I really like to look at um, reversal plays because it doesn't mean always that the trade is over. There's still opportunities <clears throat> and I like to wait for the right entry when it does pull back. And we had quite a few reversals to trade the other day and people did very well on that. So congratulations to those traders. Um, but you know, this company, I mean, what is this company all about? Um, this company, uh, you know, started back in 1988 and they supply uh, what they talk about, um, life science consumables and instrumentation to research labs, universities, the veterinarian facilities. <clears throat> um, they're also into biotech, pharmaceutical companies, also throughout Africa. Um, so they're definitely into many different things. They're into high tech products. Um, they also do a lot of research in the life sciences sector. Um, so this is a really interesting, uh, company and I never really heard of it until it started, um, having the action that it did. Um, so, uh, this has caught my attention because I really do like companies that are in this actual industry. Um, they also have bio nano chips. They have a lot of data solutions and they have another product called Sapphire and Sapphire is an optical mapping solution and it helps them go through um, research with unmatched structural variation. Um, so you can actually read more about that. Um, that basically helps them um, research, I guess, diseases, conditions, including cancers and developmental disorders. And this actual, I guess, 
product can help detect these kinds of things. So I guess it's, you know, used by um, the um, industry, the uh, pharmaceutical industry, um, but definitely uh, a very interesting company. I'm really surprised it's at this price. I'm going to be paying more attention to this company. Um, so definitely a company to watch, in my opinion, longer term. So, um, Jim, let's hear more about this because uh, I think, you know, it had a nice run, uh, but I think it's it's a stock that could have uh, longer term holds down the road. I'm going to be watching this on a regular basis. Yeah, I listened to a comment last week and he said, this thing's going to have an offering, you know. Uh, the revenue was up um, 3.3 million, but the, the bulls were coming out in the pennies last week. And on this first bounce up, you can see that it had a 470 high. Now, I, people ask me sometimes when they get stuck in a stock and they don't know what to do, I usually tell them the next run is going to be like a 50% retracement bounce or more. I mean, but 50% is what you can think of. And we did have that sell-off that happened after that big run. It pulled all the way back down here to, to this low level of 113, you know. So people were really starting to sweat this out after it ran all the way up to 470. And I had the same person, a couple of people asked me about VIVE. You know, they got stuck in that stock too as beginners, not knowing what a pump is and what is not a pump. Usually when I see bad news on a stock, I usually compare it to a pump. But as you can see, it did pull back. It didn't last very long. I mean, the run was good, but like Miss Vegas said, I scalped this thing five times on this run. And again, I called this stock at $2 on Friday, and it bounced all the way up to 385 to $4. So you can play them. You just got to watch the trend. But anytime you get stuck in a stock like this and it pulls back on you, kind of think, okay, I might want to cost average down on the next starting when it starts to look like it's going to be bullish and take a 50% retracement bounce on it and gain back your losses. That's just one way of playing it. And I'm, and I'm just like helping people out that, that get in trouble on these PNDs because all of a sudden, you know, it's at 50 cents and it bounces up to 470. Something ain't right there. You always got to register in your mind, you know, something's not right there. And it will pull back. And then if you get stuck in it, you can try to come back in it, grab you some more shares, and, and get that retracement bounce of 50%. And this happens a lot. A lot of people don't recognize that, but it happens a lot because there's bag holders in the trade. But I'm going to be bullish on this into next week. I'm going to watch the action. I got a low support right now. I'm going to adjust this. I'm going to put another one right here at 159. So let's look at the 20 day. It did have an $8 high. And we now know that it, it, it did register for an offering. So you got to just keep that in mind. They just want to raise money. But I do believe in this company and I do believe what it can do. And let's go to the 20 day now. We'll look at the 20 day at a bigger picture on my TTM. We did have a low support right down here at 120. Right now we're at 221. So that first support level is going to be where this pullback came at 189. And I'm going to put this at 189. I'm going to draw that in red. So I'll remember that come Monday. That's going to be a strong support level for me to maybe get back in this trade, but I want to watch the action. And then we've got another low, 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 low support right down here at 120. And if I see that, I'm definitely going to jump in this trade if the volume is there. Now, I've been trading these stocks for over 15 years, these penny stocks. So I know kind of how they are and how they run. And, and I can tell the difference between a P&D and a, and a good moving stock with good news. But we do have a trend right here. We do have a higher, higher low. And it did bounce off that 20 day, I mean that 200 day on a 20 minute, one hour chart, you know, which was positive seen right there. And then the rest of the day, you could see in pre-market that it was going to get action. And it probably pulled back a little bit to that support level at 159. And then went ahead and jumped on up and had a great day after that. And we created a little resistance right here at 323. Now that's a, that's a more than a 50% retracement, but yet, if you follow the trend in the social media, this was really had a lot of tension Friday and people did real experienced traders did real well with the stock. And we do have another support here at 188. So that's going to be my first support level, maybe my second support level. 
My third one's going to be here at 159, and my double bottom strong buy is going to be down here at 120. The resistance that we do need to break, I'm not counting the wicks, I'm counting the, the base of the candle, and that's going to be here at 323. We might have another small retracement. We could be creating a pennant flag with the lower highs and the higher lows, and we could squeeze up, and it could bounce up, or it could bounce down. And that's going to be BNGO, and that concludes our Sunday's edition market report. Miss Vegas, anything else you'd like to say? No, I just want to wish everyone a really good trading week. <clears throat> I hope you guys do great and uh, love hearing your feedback. And again, you're more than welcome to come check us out and uh, see what the experience is like. It's really important. I think I find it very valuable when uh, people are on voice all day to give guidance in real time. I mean, you know, sometimes there are rooms I've been in in the past that don't have voice all day. Um, and I just, you know, they're good rooms. Um, but I find that, you know, when you're in trades, I mean, it's good to get real time um, guidance. And I think that's really important with trading. And I think it's proven itself. I mean, I had a lot of people uh, be so grateful that we actually give of our time all day. Um, it's a lot of work, but you know what? It's very rewarding and satisfying to know that we're helping people. And that's what I love doing. And so does Jim. So um, welcome to come anytime. And uh, you know what? We're uh, excited about what the week has to offer and uh, look forward to sharing some ideas um, on StockTwits and some ideas on Twitter and uh, hopefully help you um, make some money. And um, if you have any questions on any charts, uh, please feel free to uh, message us and happy to help you uh, as best we can. Again, you know, we try to help, obviously, the people in the room are a priority. So sometimes on social media, I will get asked a question about a chart. I can't always answer as timely or as in real time because I am actively busy with the group in the room. But that's why we offer you a trial so that you can come and be there and get the assistance in real time versus responding on social media. And I know sometimes people are busy and they don't have time for a chat room, which is okay. So again, if you ask a question, you know, it's hard sometimes to respond in real time, but certainly we'll get back to you. So have a great week and we'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll be doing another video. So stay tuned, subscribe, follow, like, and comment below. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. This is our website, ilovestocks.com. We have a link down here for Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter link. We have now 708 followers. It rises every week. We also have on the site where you can get a hold of us through our stock twit stock twits account and vegas and i are right here mine and miss vegas she's always on top she's number one we have pinterest we have the the uh I, the youtube channel that you can follow us on youtube please subscribe and ring that bell also we're selling merchandise so check out our little merchandise department here you can always grab you some i grabbed three items last week i grabbed me a uh oh one of these hoodies i grabbed me an apron and I grabbed me a mug, and we do welcome the stock chicks. This is I Love Stocks, and everybody have a great day. Great next week, and we are bullish all the time, but we do play the bears.